Here we have uh, a team that's got a lot of defensemen who can play in the NHL. Can a team have too many NHL caliber defensemen? I no, but you, they can't all be the same type of player as well. You can't have six kind of uh, not especially big puck movers because at some point you'll run into a heavier team that wants to grind you down low. You can't have six big, heavy, stay-at-home guys because that's not the way the NHL is now. So uh, the Oilers have a pretty decent blend. You know, I really like, and we, we saw it coming. Like we, we saw this a few years ago when Ethan Bear and Caleb Jones were kind of uh, working their way up and you know they have Nurse who's been spectacular. Larson is playing the best hockey of his career. So you mix in a couple of young puck movers. They added Tyson Berry which has been way better than anybody expected him to be especially after last season in Toronto and then they still have more to come with Broberg and, and Bouchard so defensively they're in a really good spot right now. Uh, can they have too many? At some point you might want to move one of those for, for some help up front, which they absolutely need. But right now, I, I really like the way their defense is set for the here and now, as well as for seven, eight, nine years from now. They're in a very good spot defensively. You brought up Ethan Bear. You hear his name in, you know, ever since he came back, you know, from the beginning of the season when he was uh, had injuries, his name has been out there floating, whether it's on the internet somewhere, Twitter, maybe somebody said something suggesting maybe Ethan Bear might be on the trading block at some point in time because there's this log jam. Why is his name coming up? Well, it's a bit of a compliment because he's somebody who could fetch a pretty significant return uh, on the open market and on, on top of that like we like we kind of just discussed the Oilers are fairly flush on defense you know believe it or not they could withstand trading a player of Bears quality and they still would be okay uh, and they desperately need another top six forward it's been illustrated you know time and time again that if for the most part if Dreisaitl and McDavid aren't driving the, the ship the ship doesn't get driven so they, they they really need a lot of help up front and Ethan Bear is a guy who you know, could fetch you something. And I'm not talking about a prospect and I'm not talking about a guy who has one year or half a season left before he's a UFA. I'm talking about a legitimate, you know, top six winger who can score and complement one of those top two lines. And, and Ethan Bear would theoretically be the primary piece that, that goes the other way. Uh, you know, the other school of thought is you've invested so much in this player and his upside is still to come. Do you really want to, do you really want to make that trade? So, I mean, I wouldn't make it unless I was, like I said, trading for somebody who's a proven top six forward, who's young and who's going to be here for, you know, four or five years to come. So, you know, we'll see what happens. There's some, you know, issues to uh, address with the expansion draft and just how this team looks going into the playoffs. But uh, you never know. I mean, I think at some point one of those defensemen might have to go just for a number of reasons. And uh, like I say, he's a really talented guy who could fetch fetch big returns so that's probably why his name is coming up yeah and i guess you know obviously the trade deadline is coming up and obviously the off season eventually will come up and there's a plenty of decisions for holland to make all related to this always a bunch of moving parts but i think there's more moving parts this year than there say was even last season or you know even before holland got here this season is uh you know with nugent hopkins's contract coming up and the expansion draft never mind adam larson Barry, and Tyson oh, Barry. Yeah, all those uh, all those things are going to play a factor. Is Darnell Nurse a Norris Trophy candidate? Yeah, that's I, I like that one because by definition, if he's a Norris Trophy candidate, he is one of the three top defensemen in the league because there's only you know three nominees at the end of the season. Is he one of those players yet? I don't know, but I, I certainly know that he's he's knocking on the door of being one of the top five, six, seven defensemen in this league. He brings a lot to the table. He logs a ton of minutes he's very durable he doesn't get hurt he's putting up the points scoring the goals he brings an element of physicality that a lot of the other names on that norris trophy list don't have he has leadership he has experience uh he's a high-end defenseman and his decision to uh take a bridge deal and gamble on himself is, is is paying off big time because when he's up again if this continues and his arc continues to rise he's going to be in, in a really good position but uh you know whether he's on whether he is a Norris Trophy candidate this year. Um, that trophy kind of goes to name recognition to some extent, but uh, he is certainly a guy by the looks of things that you can 
that you can build a franchise around and he's a legitimate top pairing defenseman that's for sure yeah at this point in time which defenseman do you think the orders will leave exposed for the seattle expansion draft this summer you know it's a loaded question and obviously things change because we still have free agency and all that stuff. Well, that, that have to, uh, there's going to be a, a couple that have to be exposed. And it, it's it's either seven forwards and three defensemen or eight total. And I think the Oilers will probably want to go on the eight total situation because I don't know that they necessarily have seven forwards that they would be devastated if they lost. Whereas if they would, you know, if they sign Tyson Berry, then suddenly you're, you're going to want to protect Nurse, Berry, Larson, and, and Bear, right? You don't want to lose any of those guys for free. So I think they're probably going to go the eight skaters route that would that way you could you'd have mcdavid dry saito rnh yamamoto pulley rv and it's still it's still easy trouble because that's five right that's one two three four five right there and you could only could check three more so they're they're going to be in trouble if, in the uh, expansion draft especially if they sign uh tyson berry and nugent hopkins that that's that's a core nine but you can only protect eight of them so or you can protect seven forwards like i said which you don't really need to do and you would still, yeah, they're they're in, they're in a spot defensively. Who would I leave open out of those? You can't let Bear get away for nothing. You can't. Let, it's all, it's an awful spot. Like I don't, I honestly don't know what you do. I mean, especially signing Tyson Berry means that Nurse Berry, Bear, or Larson, one of them, you have to let walk away for free. And it's just that's an agonizing decision. And again, that might be one of the reasons if you're Ken Holland that you say, okay, we're going to have to trade Ethan Bear and get a get a forward for him and then you know go the seven and three route maybe because uh, as it stands now they're going to lose a, a very talented player which is the sign of a good team when you can only you know when you're going to lose a high-end guy but uh they're they're in a they're in a quandary there and out of those four i i would trade somebody before i left somebody unprotected obviously we saw this recently with vegas joining the league three years ago but you know and they made side deals you know obviously to lay you know don't take this guy if we trade, you know, make this deal or whatever. So, you know, because among the forward ranks, you're right. I mean, there's plenty of forwards who the owners could you know, let go and that would be just fine. But yeah, I mean, when you have that stockpile, I mean, that's, that's, that's Ron Francis, the Kraken GM, you know, salivating at, Ooh, look, I can get a legitimate top four. Yeah, right there. there. <laughs> Never mind if it's a top two like bear, but you're right. Yeah, I know you you pull you pull a thread and all of a sudden everything starts to unravel. So it kind of makes yeah. Sense. Does that mean they have to they have to let Tyson Berry go because they you know if if they can't wriggle around some protection in the draft that that, that you would lose an Ethan Bear. It's a uh, he's going to be earning his money this summer, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, if he can swing some sort of under the table deal where you know you take this player and we'll work something out in the future, that would be ideal. But if I'm uh, if I'm the crack and I'm just like you know what no I'll take Ethan Bear you know so it's gonna be hard to talk them out of taking one of those four defensemen if if it comes to that. What about Adam Larson? He's arguably having his best season as an Oiler. You know his first season as an Oiler was a good one as well, but he's a UFA at the end of the year. What do the Oilers do? Do they want to sign him or not? Yeah, I think you you don't break the bank for somebody like Adam Ars Adam Larson, but he's one of those players that you you like to have on your side for a lot of different reasons. Again, he's a big physical, he plays the game really hard. He's durable again. He's very rarely injured. And, you know, you do need a shutdown guy, even though the league is, you know, let's go forward and the best defense is a good offense and puck movement and the whole thing. You need a guy in the last minute or so or on a PK that, that that's, that's, that's part of the game too. And he excels at that. So I would, I would certainly, certainly want to resign uh, Adam Larson. I think he likes it here. I think he likes the team. He likes the situation. I don't think he'll, you know, hold Edmonton's feet to the fire as an unrestricted free agent. So if you can get him for a reasonable price, absolutely. And and if he says, you know, no, I'm going to explore the market, then that maybe solves one of your issues on the uh, expansion draft front. So, again, a lot of moving pieces for Ken Holland to address. But I do like Adam Larson as a player. I like, uh, and the guys like his personality and, and leadership in the room. So, uh you know, I don't think when you're the Oilers and you're kind of trending upward and looking like you're not far away from being a contender, you, you don't mess around with your core. I think you try to retain them and, and, and uh, see what they're like moving forward. Again, all this is also predicated on how the season ends and what they look like in the playoffs. If it's another, you know, five-game exit in the first round to, say, Montreal or Winnipeg, then 
but maybe all bets are off and you reevaluate everything. You can only keep one of these players. Do you keep Tyson Berry or Evan Bouchard? It's no contest in the long run. It's Evan Bouchard 100%. Having said that, I don't think Evan Bouchard will be who everybody thinks he's going to be for another probably three three years. And we're, we're approaching Edmonton's window right now. So we all saw what happened to Justin Schultz when you throw a guy in there too quick and give him too much responsibility. Even if you leave Bouchard as a third-pairing guy and, and only play him on the power play, you know, rookies make mistakes and you're fishing the puck out of your net and it's your fault on two goals and you lost that game and it, it, it weighs on a person, right? You know, he should be in the American League right now. Uh, next year is the year where they should be sort of blending him in, but with the pandemic, everything's up in the air. But long-term, Evan Bouchard looks like he potentially could be a star in this league for a long, long time. Tyson Berry is, is a really good player right in the here and now. Ideally, you want both, if you, but if you say you can only commit to one, then it's, it's Bouchard and it's not close. Thank you.